Hello and welcome. I'm Lindsay Crane and these are my retro craft dreams. Today, we're going back to the beginning. For me, as far as vintage craft kit collecting and hoarding goes, this is the start of my obsession, calico Christmas ornaments. As a quick side note, calico in the United States is a term used not to refer to the type of fabric as it is in countries abroad. Calico in the United States refers to the print on the fabric, which is a small, typically floral print. So you've got the small, tiny print on a cotton fabric. For many decades now, that's what the term calico in the United States has referred to. And so that is how I will use the term on this channel. This is arguably one of my favorite retro vintage things. I was doing a puzzle with this wonderful, cozy Christmas aesthetic. I'll try and put a picture up. And yeah, it's got the, the calico Christmas ornaments on the tree and, and the wrapping paper, and it's got the brick hearth, and it's just homey, cozy, very warm vintage vibe that just feels like a hug. <laughs> and I found online these calico Christmas ornaments by a company called Yours Truly. They made just an abundance of these ornaments and they weren't the only ones, but there's a lot of them out there that are by Yours Truly. And they didn't only make ornaments, but this was the start of my love for vintage 70s and 80s calico patchwork. There's just something really special and unique about calicos from the 70s and into the 80s. I'm just fascinated by it. I just, I think they're so darling, honestly. Somehow I caught on to the idea that I would like to hand sew one Christmas ornament every year and I'm working my way towards this cozy calico Christmas collection. Not everything is calico, but uh, I'll definitely have my 80s Christmas going given enough time. So two years ago, I made this one and that was as far as I got. And then last year, I made this one and I had wanted to make more, but this was as far as I got. And it occurred to me that just make that be my new tradition to hand sew one of these ornaments every year. So this year I am going to make my third ornament and I've chosen a rather simple one um, because I have a lot to do, uh, but it's gonna be a nice quick make. Even though I'm hand sewing, it's still gonna go pretty quickly. The kit I'm working on today is from 1976. However, I didn't want to go too much into the specific year for these kits because I feel like they were probably in production for several years. And when you look at just a calico Christmas kind of aesthetic, you are going all the way into the early 80s. Um, and I'm not exactly even sure when it starts, probably in the early 70s. So this is a style of prints and, and things that have just, they were around for a good long time. So for these ornaments, I'm not gonna get too far into a specific year, but I think they were most prevalent in that 70s, 80s cusp, you know, the late 70s to the early 80s. So I'm gonna work on my annual Calico Christmas ornament and stay tuned for my next episode. I've got another really great 80s kitschy Christmas piece coming. This is the Three Christmas Trees Ornament Kit by Yours Truly. I have opened it previously. I, you know, many times thought I was gonna start ornaments that I was not able to. So in here, we've got just the back of the picture has the pattern on it. And I will need to get some tracing paper. I don't ever cut these. I will trace it onto something else so I can keep this intact. We've got some felt, which I believe is for the trunks. And then we've got these smaller bits of calico. Look how cute that is. They're just so pretty, but like clearly vintage. Then we have a gingham, and this blue and green polka dots. And then we've got the larger piece for the back of the trees and our bit of Batting. I did have a look ahead of time at these instructions and I'm going to need to cut
cut them into strips and sew them all together first. So we're looking at one and a half inch wide by six inch long. All right, so we need to keep them on their length and we're just cutting one and a half inch this way. For things like this, I actually like to use a T-square because I can put it right on the edge of my cutting mat and know that I'm getting a perpendicular cut. Now, I need to arrange them into one great big rectangle. And we want each tree to have each fabric, yes. And I should probably definitely make sure I alternate between green and blue. Okay, let's see. Now I could just like make a pattern of five and then repeat it. That would make sense. And they'll still be different because they're going to be turned different ways. Should I just do that? It's possible that the sixth fabric will be on one so I don't want to do like a sandwich okay decisions I'm probably just overthinking it of course I'm overthinking it all right I'm gonna sit on this for a minute while I find some tracing paper notice too there's like a slight curve this isn't a perfect triangle got our pattern my cat looks like he's thinking about joining us I do actually think I like the newsprint better for this. It's kind of a little more difficult to see through, but it's slightly sturdier and I think that's worth it. But I don't know what I did with all my newsprint. So I'm gonna put this here. Really? Dude, do you have to be right here? Like right here? You have to be right there. You can't be here. Don't you bump me with these giant scissors. And now I'm gonna have to commit to my decision on my pattern order, and then I gotta start stitching. What are you doing, Toby? Are you, what are you doing? You. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be sewing at this table today. Hi, what do you want today? I just need to start sewing. There he goes. Okay, yes, get bored, Toby, and just go. I'm only making one, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and just work on these five, and then I can decide about the rest when I come back around to this project. So I'm just gonna use a straight stitch. I'm hand sewing these things, but I'm not good at it. I can't sew a straight line. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mark that with a friction pen on the wrong side. And I probably need some pins too, don't I? But the awkwardness commence. Now, does this fit or do I need to add more? It just fits, I think. The blue at the bottom. That kind of really anchors the tree. So we're gonna do the blue at the bottom. I'm very much in the camp of, I kind of would rather not have the seam allowance. I'd rather have the stitch line. This is currently where I am keeping the remnants. 
of completed kits. Um, and I have these pieces which are from my Noel sign and I think I'm gonna use this gold for this hanger. Go ahead and tie a knot in this just so that it doesn't pull out. It's gonna be kinda bulky. So what I'm supposed to do with the batting Place right sides of the front and back together, put the batting on top and pin in place. Using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch the three layers together. I'm just gonna do this haphazardly. Cut out the felt bases, place the wide side of the felt piece on the patchwork tree between the notches and sew. I'm gonna stitch the stem on first. Uh, the instructions are not clear actually as to how you're supposed to do it it just says to like put it between the notches and stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance but it didn't say like right side together upside down now we got to make our little sandwich so it's going to be right sides together the hanger I am making up myself, so that's not how that goes. It goes like this, Lindsay. Trick is I need to make sure I don't actually accidentally stitch into this. So that's just to keep it out of my seam allowance. Let's go ahead and pin that in place. Although this knot is like really chunky, but if I can get enough stitches in it, maybe I can cut the knot out and then this this. Pin that all together. Okay, we start here. Come on.
that's this year's ornament. It's really cute. I'm glad I went with the um, gold string uh, and put it in the seam instead of through the way the instructions said. It's a little puffy, but in a weird way. I don't know. I almost want to actually quilt it. It's a pretty simple design, um, which is why it's the prints themselves that really make it vintage. I believe yours truly made the fabric as well um, in some fashion or another. I don't know who manufactured it, but it is their fabric. Um, so they put the same fabrics in all of their kits. Now, sometimes, of course, they'll have to swap out one for another. And that is one really fun thing about these calico kits is, you know, the fabrics are all interchangeable. It is, in fact, the exact same fabric that's in the star. Do I have a favorite? I gotta go with the star. I think, I think the star is still my favorite. Goodness, they make me smile. Hopefully at some point in my life, I'll have space for two trees and I'll have the elegant tree and then my little cozy calico Christmas tree. We're, we're making uh, some, some progress. So, I mean, three years, three ornaments. <laughs> I love them. And I can't wait to do more. Of course, I can't do more this year. There's a bit too much going on this year. Oh, this is gonna make some noise. We gotta put the bell one down. Um, <laughs> so there's only so much I can do this year because I am moving. Um, did I say that before? I know I said that before. Did it make it in the edit? I don't know if it made it in the edit. I'm just stoked that I did get it done in a day, even hand sewing, because I am an awkward hand sewer and thought I would be way slower. I think that means that I have been getting some good sewing practice. Um, and I do hope to step up to garments pretty soon. Um, I'm hoping to make something before I even move. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'll film it, of course, but I don't know when I get around to editing it. So even though I was still doing it really awkwardly and, you know, my stitches are, they look terrible, but you can't see my stitches. Um, so yeah, it feels like I've definitely improved my hand sewing somewhat. So that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed doing a little bit of hand sewing with me. And um, maybe you got an idea of a nice simple little ornament that you can make. I can't provide this pattern to you because it's, you know, it's not mine, but it's, it's a triangle. It's a triangle with a stem. I have another Christmas episode coming, assuming I can get it finished on time. I think I can. Um, so I'll see you at least one more time for the holidays. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so you can catch my next video. And I will see you next time. Happy crafting. What did I say? One and a half inch? I have already forgotten. Lindsay's awkward. She's awkward. You can't have my needle cake. Go in the window. Go in the window. In the window. Where, where are my friction pens? Let's get a red and a green. You're my light. Hey! What you reframing my camera for? Oh, what is happening right now? Awkward, awkward. I'm so awkward. I'm an awkward, awkward person. Lindsay is awkward at sewing. Awkward. 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 Why are you showing them your butthole? People don't actually want your butthole. Think just because you're a cat that your butthole is, like, divine? Hey, bud. <laughs> it's attached to something. Hi. Merry whatever. Happy winter.